Proudly, we hail. stage begins. Here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail another airman of the United States Air Force. suddenly felt there was something familiar about it? Well, there are all kinds of explanations for it, but probably the simplest one is that there are lots of places that look alike. There are even parts of Korea that look like parts of America, as Sergeant Al Parsons discovers in today's story, which is titled, The View from Katie's Hill. Our story in just a moment. But first, you former servicemen... Have you heard the deal you can now get in the United States Air Force? Well, if you're skilled in a vital job, you're in Clover. Choice assignments are available in the United States and overseas. Or, if an aptitude test shows you could do a needed job, the Air Force will guarantee you technical training and make this guarantee before you enlist. There's a paid 30-day delay in reporting, too, if you request it. And listen to this. Today, the Air Force will pay you more. Reenlistment bonuses are also bigger than ever before. And you'll enjoy job security, a guaranteed annual wage, and 30 days paid vacation. So don't miss these big benefits. If you're a veteran of any service, call or visit your local Air Force recruiter right away. There's no obligation, of course. Ask to see the new personalized prior service booklet. Yes, you'll see why we say, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now your Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, The View from Katie's Hill. That spring in Korea, the bombers went out over the enemy lines on missions every day, sometimes twice a day. The bombers and the fighters went out to knock out the enemy artillery, to break up his communications, to destroy his supply. And one of the main reasons they were able to go out and do their job was because they usually knew where to find their targets. And while it may sound like a very simple thing, if you stop to think about it, it does get a little bit complicated. First of all, if you're the commanding officer of a bombardment outfit, true, it's your mission to bomb the enemy. But the enemy is occupying a lot of real estate. How do you know what's worth bombing and what isn't? There's a limit to your planes, your crews, and even your bombs. To make things even rougher, whatever else the enemy is, he's no fool. He knows you're going to bomb him. And he certainly isn't going to cooperate. To the best of his ability, he will attempt to hide his targets, disguise and camouflage them. So you're always going back to fundamentals. Before you can bomb him, you have to find him. And that's why every day, men like Sergeant Al Parsons would report the duty to what is known as photo reconnaissance section, far behind the lines. And Sergeant Al Parsons is a man who spends his day looking at pictures that were taken by reconnaissance pilots. Because Sergeant Parsons is a photo interpreter. And he's got quite a job. Because some of the pictures he looks at were taken thousands of feet in the air. And to look at, they're just a mass of lines and shadows. But then again, it depends on who looks at them and what he's trained to look for. Oh. Prints come up from the lab yet, Parsons? Yes, I've got them right here, Lieutenant Wilson. Mm-hmm. 
Oh. Did you look through them? Yes, sir. I pulled out a few that I think might have something. First of all, sir, I put the pictures they took after the last strike at Kayampan on your desk. Oh, that's good. Intelligence will want an estimate of the bomb damage. Offhand, how does it look? Well, we'll know more after analysis, sir. But it sure looks like they really plastered the place. Uh-huh. Okay, I'll get to it. Where's the new stuff? Well, look at this first, Lieutenant. It's taken at 5,000 feet. Pilot thought he saw gun emplacements, but there aren't any. Well, it's a village. That's a typical cluster of huts. I'd say those are the homes of a small farming community of about 200 people. Mm -hmm. Hey, wait a minute, Parsons. There's something wrong with this picture. I thought so, too, sir. That's why I pulled it out. As you say, Lieutenant, this looks like a typical village of rice farmers. Yes, that's what's wrong with it. Where are the rice paddies? There aren't any rice fields within a radius of... Um, What's the scale on that photo? A ten mile, sir. Yeah. All right, let's take a good long look at this. Let's get some heights and elevations. What time was it taken? 1,300 hours. I got in early this morning, sir, so I had a chance to get up the preliminaries. Now, here's the position of the sun for 1,300 hours at this location. The average height of huts of this type is uh, 10 feet. Now, let's measure the length of the shadow. All of this is part of what happens before the fighters and bombers go out. It's a detective story, perhaps the most fascinating and complex detective story in the world. Because bits and pieces have to fit into place. You start with one little piece of information. And before you're through, the picture taken from high up in the air takes on meaning and shape. I'm sorry, sir. I guess I must have made a mistake in the arithmetic. According to the figures, the picture is now out of scale. No, no. No, your figures are right, Parsons. See, these parallel lines leading to the huts are the key. Hmm? Now, we've calculated their width to be the distance between wheels of the carts these farmers would use to haul their stuff. But now, if we calculate them one foot wider, they become the distance between wheels on a truck. Truck? That's right. I use this as a scale, and the huts become higher. Much higher than the average farmer's hut in a village of this type. Well, now, wait a minute, sir. If these lines in the dust are made by truck wheels, then just what are trucks doing in a village like this? Well, that's probably why they built these huts higher in the first place. They're higher and wider. They can drive the trucks inside. Let's start working all this up for intelligence. Hey, Romeo, mail call. Oh, good morning, Lieutenant. Good morning, Sergeant Jackson. Hey, the mail just came in, Al. I saw this letter for you with that uh, New Hampshire postmark, so I uh, figured... Thanks, maybe Charlie. You... Lieutenant, I'll start typing up the report right now. We can have a briefing kit for the pilots by tomorrow morning. Oh, I'm sure we will. It'll be ready even if you uh, take a couple of minutes off right now to read your letter. Oh, well, thank you, sir. I'll be in the major's office. A real good guy, the lieutenant. Hey, what does Katie have to say for herself this morning? Now, look, isn't a man entitled to some privacy? Don't hand me that, buddy. I've been sweating this romance out for more than a year. I'm going to be best man at that wedding, remember? Hey, look at this. Yeah, what is it? What does it look like? It's a photograph. It just looks like a bunch of fields and hills to me. Don't you get to look at enough stuff like that all day? Well, Katie's house is on top of a hill. She took a picture of the view. Isn't it beautiful? You know, I must be getting nervous in the service, buddy. Maybe I've been away from home too long. Remember, I thought that photo was taken right here in Korea. Well, yeah. Terrain is pretty hilly. These are almost the same kind of maple trees. Hey, what is she write? That's none of your business. Do you mind? Okay, I don't have to be told twice. And to prove I'm really your buddy, I'll even start putting some of the stuff you and the lieutenant have been working on in the typewriter. Read your letter, Romeo. Read your letter. They say one picture is worth a thousand words. And, and so, so I, I took, took the, the camera, camera you bought me for my birthday, and here is our view in August, in the full bloom of summer, before autumn strips the green mantle from the maple. In a month or so, it'll all be changed. Then I'll stand here again with our camera and take a new picture of the same old place. I was in town the other day, and I stopped by the furniture store. The living room set is still in the window. Old Mr. Soames says he doesn't care. He, he won't, won't sell, sell it to anyone else, else until you come back. Hey, Charlie. Yeah? You know something? 
Huh? If I didn't know better, I could also believe that that picture was taken right here in Korea. The very next day, a flight of 84s approached what appeared to be a small farming village in North Korea. At a signal from their leader, the plane suddenly swooped low and the tiny hut seemed to explode under a hail of bullets and bombs. And as the primitive buildings exploded into the air, it was possible to see that these houses were concealing vehicles and supplies. The target was destroyed and mission accomplished the plane's return to the base. Back at photo reconnaissance, they weren't surprised that their diagnosis had been correct. Nor did they have time to congratulate themselves. They were too deep in another and more serious problem. And we've got what amounts to a first priority problem in this Sector 7A. Now turn to your maps labeled Central Front. That's it. Now, right here, a ground forces offensive is being completely stalled. The enemy has a strong concentration of troops in this area. Everybody look at Sector 7A between grid points 18 and 23. Well, sir, it seems to me that the enemy should have been completely disrupted in this sector. We've had air strikes there every day. Yes, I'm coming to that, Parsons. We've knocked out all his lines of communication. There's absolutely no way that we can see that the enemy can supply his troops there. Well, then, sir, the answer has to be that the enemy already has a tremendous supply depot in this area, and we haven't found it. Yes, that's the answer, and that's the problem. But as you say, it would have to be a tremendous depot. Where could he hide it? We have to find it. These troops are holding up an entire offensive. We've got to find their supplies, destroy them, and get our offensive moving again. We're taking recon photos of the entire sector around the clock, practically. Parsons, you and Jackson are going to give a stiff preliminary inspection to every single one. Anything, any feature, any clue, no matter how insignificant it may seem, is to be noted and rushed to me, Captain Smith, or Major Evans. All right, here's the first batch of photographs just up from the lab. Give them the works. I'll be in my office. He isn't kidding. Uh, I guess he isn't. I was over to see Sergeant Hill at Liaison yesterday. The calls keep coming in all the time. They keep asking for planes. The Reds are really dug in. They never seem to run out of ammo or supplies. Oh, man, look at that batch of photos on the desk. Let's get with it, huh? Oh, boy, those pilots are taking pictures of everything. Now, look, here's a stream running through a field. What are you looking at? Hmm? Oh, nothing, nothing. What'd you put it aside for? Something on it? Oh, no, it's just personal. Oh, what could be personal about an aerial photo taken over enemy territory? Oh, just reminds me of Katie. Ah. Now, I think you've been here too long also. How could a picture like that remind you of Katie? Well, you remember the photo she took of the view from the hill where she lives? Yeah. Well, now, take a look at this. Ah, oh, you're crazy. No, no, I mean it. You see these hills in the distance surrounding a valley and these patches of trees here? Well, they're maple trees, almost the same kind we have in New Hampshire. What do you say we start looking for what could be a supply depot? Yeah, okay. Good morning, Sergeant. Oh, morning, Lieutenant. Any luck? No, nothing yet. Where can that depot be hidden? Oh, we'll have to keep looking, that's all. Anything come up this morning? Nothing to give us a lead, sir. Oh, I've been looking at so many pictures, I'm beginning to see things that aren't there. Me too. What's that one you pulled out? Oh, oh, this one. We keep getting routine photos on grid point 19 in the sector. I guess I'm just being sentimental, but... It reminds me of the view from my fiancé's home. Now, look, here's the picture she sent me last month. Doesn't it look something like the terrain around 19? Mm, yeah... A little bit. Mm hmm. The same configuration of terrain. Well, there's one thing I learned traveling around in the Air Force. There's a lot of similar geography in this world. You know, there's a whole section of the New York State Thruway between Albany and Buffalo that reminds me of the Autobahn in Germany. Hey, that's that man's right. here again. Nice, fresh photos. By the time we're through, we'll know every blade of grass in Korea. Well, let's all of us sit down, take them one at a time. If only we could get a break. Any kind of a break. In addition to everything else, you need the brakes. You need that little bit of luck, that tiny flash of inspiration that suddenly lets in the light. The brake, the one little brake, was in the making, although no one in photo recon knew it at the moment. The brake wasn't taking place in Sector 7A either. It wasn't even taking place in Korea. It was happening thousands of miles away in the green hills of New Hampshire. There was a girl named Katie Sloan who was Sergeant Al Parsons' fiancée, and she was getting ready to send a letter to Sergeant Parsons' that would affect the lives of thousands of men in Korea. Papa! Ah, 
Hi, Katie. Did you remember to bring me the film? Well, sure, I remembered. Well, let me have it. There's still enough sunlight to take a picture. Oh, okay, okay, here you are. Oh, thanks, Papa. I think the view is most beautiful now in fall. Well, where Al is now, this view is much better than anything he's looking at. Well, this is the last picture I'll send him till the snow falls. That's the next time it'll look different. Supper ready? Well, all right if I take my pictures first. Oh, why, take your pictures. Well, you don't know how important it is to Al, Papa. And neither do you, Katie. And neither does Al, right now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. Our story, The View from Katie's Hill. We'll return for the second act in just a moment. If you're a veteran of any service, you should know about the Air Force Prior Service Program and the opportunities it offers to all former servicemen. For example, consider your job right now and compare it to an Air Force enlistment. Here are some of the benefits now offered. Security, a guaranteed annual wage, 30-day paid vacations, promotion opportunities, and valuable technical training that can put you out in front in this jet age. If your job doesn't offer all these benefits and many others, you owe it to yourself to visit your nearest Air Force recruiter and check on a career with... Yes, the Air Force gives you all these and more under the liberalized prior service program. You start with a grade based on your military skill with choice assignments in the U.S. and overseas. And if you request it, you get a paid 30-day delay to report to... The U.S. Air Force Thousands of veterans are returning to the Air Force under the prior service program with good reasons that may apply to you. Find out why we say today and tomorrow you're better off in the United States Air Force. There's a career for you in... The U.S. Air Force the U.S. Air Force And here's a special note to the veterans who are already trained in one of the technical skills vitally needed now in the Air Force. You may be awarded a higher grade and higher pay than you realize. Talk it over. Find out about all the new opportunities open to you by checking with your local United States Air Force recruiter. Now, the second act of the Proudly We Hail production, The View from Katie's Hill. Oh, well, I figured I'd try it here at the BX tonight. Yeah, how was it? Nothing to write home about. What'd you come across today? That's why I came here instead of the mess hall. I just don't want to talk shop. I've had it. Yeah, I know how you feel. Nothing again. That's right. I tell you what, let's take in the movie, huh? After staring at pictures all day, I'm in no shape for the movie. Sergeant today. Parsons, what? Sergeant Jackson, report to Lieutenant Wilson at once. Well, I thought so, buddy. Night work. I think so. Night work, day work, work around the clock till we find that depot. Al? Al? Hmm? Hey, hmm? come on, wake up. Oh, come on. Come on, will you, Charlie? Will you get out of here? I just got to get to sleep. Okay, go back to sleep. All I wanted to do was tell you the mail came in. You got a letter from Katie. Well, I can always give it to you when you get up. I'll see you. Hey, come on, come on, wise guy. Hand it over, huh? Hey, here. What does she say? So that one, you'll get the usual answer. None of your business. Hey, is that another picture of the view? Yeah, yeah. Boy, it sure looks different, huh? What does she say about it? May I be excused for a few moments, old buddy? And here is our view now in September. The maples look melancholy. They know winter will soon be here. Last night, we had our first frost. Ah, it sure looks pretty in New Hampshire this time of the year. Tell you what, let's do. What do you say we go down to the shop, roll up our sleeves, clean up the whole war, then we can go home? That's not a bad idea at all. Wait till I put my shoes on. Yep. 
penny for your thoughts, buddy. Hmm? Oh, oh, nothing. Nothing? You've been staring at that photo for a good half hour. I thought you might have been onto something. Now I look and see it's our old friend along grid 19. Tell me, do we have to do that homesick bit every day? You know, I wouldn't swear to it, but something bothers me about grid 19, buddy. Yeah, like what? I don't know yet. Maybe it's nothing. Now, look, this photo was from yesterday morning, low altitude. So? So, I want to concentrate on the shadows of the foliage from the maple trees. Say, are you kidding, or do you really think you have something? How many shots have we got at grid 19? Close to 100 taken over the past month and a half. Okay, first, help me clear the table, then get every one of them out of the files and spread them out. Yeah. And then call Lieutenant Wilson. What do you want me to look at, Parsons? Well, first of all, sir, I'd like you to look at some pictures my fiance has been sending me from home. Oh, well, I've seen them. The terrain is kind of similar to that around grid 19, especially the vegetation. These, these are almost the same kind of maple trees. Now, sir, over the past month and a half, we've been going from late summer through fall. You notice how the trees in New Hampshire are losing their leaves? Yes, that's right. Now... The pictures my girl has been sending aren't aerial photos, so you can actually see there are less leaves. The trees just don't appear to be as luxuriant. Keep going, Parsons. I think I see something, too. Fine. Here we have pictures of the grid 19 area. This little piece of it, taken at the same time of the day over a long period of time. There should have been a considerable loss of leaves. It should be obvious from the shape of the shadows. It should even be obvious visually. Mm -hmm. If those aren't genuine maple trees, the whole area is suspect. And this would be the neatest job of camouflage I ever saw. Now, let me throw a rock at that if I can, Al. Sure, mm. these and the ones at home are both maples, but they're not exactly the same, you know. Soil is different. A lot of other factors could be working so that these trees would keep their leaves longer than ours. Yes, that could be true. But I still think Parsons may have hit something. The fact remains there should have been a considerable loss of leaves even now. Well, sir, if it's camouflage, it's being done by guys who really know their business. Now, wouldn't they figure this angle and try to cover it? That could have been their one little mistake. Let's call for one more picture in this particular area of grid 19. Let's get a plane out there right now. And so, once again, a recon plane went out with cameras going. This time, the target was a fixed spot on a map. It was what looked like a plateau surrounded by hills. It even looked like a piece of real estate in New Hampshire, with rolling fields and spreading maples. Maybe it was what it appeared to be. And then again... Maybe it wasn't. Where is our grove of maple trees? Right here, Lieutenant. Uh -huh. Looks different, doesn't it? Do you notice how the trees seem to have less leaves? Yes, it's almost as though they knew what we were talking about. The foliage is much sparser. But if you look at the whole series of photos, you'll notice that the change is too abrupt. Uh -huh. Can't be nature. Have we got something, Lieutenant? I don't know, but I'm taking this into the Major's office right now. You better come along, Parsons. Right, sir. <laughs> Gentlemen, this briefing session will be run by Sergeant Parsons, who was instrumental in making what we think is one of the most important discoveries to date. Sergeant? Thank you, sir. Well, uh, in that well-known Sector 7A... I'd like to call your attention to this triangle right in the middle of grit point 19. Now, it looks, it looks like a rolling plateau surrounded by hills. It's a meadow with a grove of maple trees. Now, it's the most unlikely-looking target you could select, which is probably just what the enemy has had in mind all along. It's our opinion that this is a masterful job of camouflage, that this is the location of the enemy supply depot. We'd like to give this area a complete workout. Sergeant Jackson will distribute your individual fact sheets. And now, Lieutenant Simmons has the latest from weather. And once again, the planes roared over the enemy lines. This time, towards what looked like a peaceful field and wooded grove. That's what the enemy had hoped it would look like. But it wasn't. Yes, sir. Good. No, Parsons, we got them. First reports from the mission. It was the depot. It was loaded with ammo. They blew it sky high. Wonderful, sir. 
Now there'll be a general ground offensive within 12 hours. We got the depot. Well, they sure had us fooled for a while, didn't they, Lieutenant? Yes, they did. Whoever designed that camouflage setup for them really knew his business. But you can't get away with it indefinitely. You can't fool a camera. Sooner or later, it has to pick up something. Right. Well, what's next, sir? Well, there'll be more photos for other targets. Meanwhile, we're all that much more close to home. Oh, talking about home, I gotta write my girl a letter. Oh, I hope you tell her how important those photos were that she sent. After all, they started you thinking. Well, sir, uh, don't you think she deserves a little credit? I mean, after all, she had a lot to do with it. Oh, well, didn't I tell you? Grid 19 has a new name. From now on, officially, it'll be known as Katie's Hill. Katie's Hill? That's right. Just like the one in New Hampshire. Well, uh, not exactly, Lieutenant, not exactly. The thing that makes the one back home important is that Katie's on it. If you're a veteran, chances are you know about the United States Air Force reenlistment policy and the opportunities it offers to all former servicemen, especially those with technical experience and backgrounds in critical skills. But here's important news you may not have heard. The Air Force has now liberalized its policy to bring you even further benefits. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. Right now, plenty of former servicemen are discovering the truth of that slogan. They're taking a look at the new advantages available under the Air Force liberalized reenlistment policy, and they're signing up for a profitable, interesting tour of duty with the Air Force team. You see, the new Air Force policy offers a choice of U.S. and overseas assignments with a fully paid 30-day delay in reporting if you request it. And listen to this. Even before you reenlist, the Air Force may be able to guarantee you technical training in one of many critical skills. In some cases... This guarantee can be made even though you've been out of the armed forces for more than a year. Yes, guarantee you this even before you re-enlist. So it makes good sense for a veteran of any service to inquire about this new liberalized Air Force policy. Contact your nearest United States Air Force recruiter now, without obligation, of course. See why we say, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. Talk it over now with your nearest Air Force recruiter. another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.